Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial by Tutorial Grid. This is going to be one of our new and fun, quick and simple tutorials. Uh, should take less than 10 minutes to do, uh, and render times are very quick. Uh, so, uh, right now we've got a cool look in uh, our professional uh, logo here for our Avid company, uh, and uh, we got a uh, cool background. But first, why don't you go ahead and hit that cool subscribe button in uh, your YouTube panel, as well as check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash everproductions479. Also Twitter at twitter.com slash tutorial grid. And for this tutorial, you're going to want to possibly download our free sample download at everproductions 479com slash light artifacts. So you'll want to get that. Uh, we've got some cool free uh, light overlays, which can be used in various uh, effects and uh, instances in your video footage. Cool. This is also brought to you in part by SiteGround. Get your awesome web hosting needs at SiteGround.com. Link into the description below. If you're looking for a new portfolio or just needing a website, they do awesome stuff with WordPress or Joomla and all that awesome fancy stuff. So make sure to check those guys out, get their services. Anyway, so we are here in After Effects. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is this. So what we've got is we've got a background, we have a logo, and we've got uh, a slight shadow on the logo, and we have this overlay, and we also have this cool streak that flies across our logo, giving it uh, somewhat of a sheen or a shine that uh, makes it look 3D-ish. Uh, we also have this cool thing that overlays it, uh, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, so we've got our, uh, our stuff looking pretty good. Uh, but yeah, we've got our shine here and a logo. Uh, so that's what we will be creating. Very quick, very simple, but effective for a logo bumper. Okay. So uh, it takes very little time to do. Uh, it's very rudimentary. And uh, yeah, so this can be used on a bunch of different kind of effects uh, or ba and backgrounds. It's very simple to swap out backgrounds too. Uh, we've got the effect set up where we've got the stone background, which is from our tutorial grid Euro pack. So if you want to check that out at avidproductions479.com slash shop, uh, it is there for download. Lots of cool textures uh, for 3D as well as they will be implemented into uh, Element 3D, 3ds Max, and a bunch of other cool 3D programs. So we've got this background. You can also swap it out for any other background. Very easy, very quick. Um, if you know <laughs> your employer says, oh, I don't like that background, just, just swap it out real quick, real simple. Okay, so first, let's go ahead and go uh, create a new composition. So we we'll hit composition, new comp, uh, and we'll just uh, we'll just call this comp two or quick and simple. 1920 by 1080, 23.976. I'm gonna do a duration of 10 seconds and hit okay. And now we've got something completely blank. Okay, so first what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to import some backgrounds. So we've got a few backgrounds here, which is from our tutorial grid Euro pack. Again, you can download that at avidproductions479.com uh, slash shop, or you can use any other uh, textured background that you want. Uh, so we've got some stuff, and me personally, I like the stone ground, but let's, but let's work on this marble wall. So we'll just go ahead and bring that down. So first and foremost, we've got this in our layer, and uh, it's looking pretty good, which is just right on top. So again, uh, just drag that right down into your composition. So the next thing we're gonna do is go to layer, new camera, and I'm gonna set this up as a 24 millimeter camera. It can be any zoom you want, uh, depending on how wide you want it or uh, how zoomy you want it. Actually, let's do it 20 megapixels and we'll kind of see this uh, perform in action. Camera lights can only be affected with 2D layers. Uh, that's fine. We'll just hit OK. We're going to make this into a 3D layer. So we'll hit our layer here and we'll just click this little 3D checkbox that will automatically make it into a 3D composition. So the next thing we're going to do is you want to make sure that what you're using is going to be a logo that is that has a transparent background. So I've got two different logos here for our production company, Ever Productions 479, which I'm just gonna go ahead and drag these on top of our marble wall here. So we've got these two and you just kind of see which one works, uh, the black or the white. Me, I think the white will do, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this background. But you wanna make sure that this has a transparent background. So if your employer has that, awesome. If not, you're gonna wanna figure out how to make that into a transparent background uh, or just see if you can key it out or 
you know, find a means of doing that or crop it out or mask it out. So whatever way works, you're going to want this transparent. Okay. So we've got this. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to duplicate that and you're going to select the one that's underneath it and you will type in your effects and presets saturation drag that down under your bottom layer and you're just going to want to go to master lightness and turn that all the way down we don't want that there at all we do not want any brightness this is going to be our shadow layer so we'll make sure to have this selected and do back into effects and presets and hit gaussian blur and pull that down and you're going to want to gaussian blur this out quite a bit so that's going to make it look like we've got a slight drop shadow in our background. You can see it right there. You can also use drop shadow, but in this case, we're using Gaussian blur on our lower level, just because we don't want a bunch of effects on our top layer. So this is going to give the effect that this is 3D. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our 3D checkbox is marked on. Okay. Uh, so, we don't want to mess around with our bottom layer. We want to keep that there. In fact, I'm going to rename this bottom layer drop shadow. Okay. So the next thing we do is we're going to hit our top layer here and we'll hit P for position. And we're going to move this up. You can either use the slider down here or the, uh, the, the numbers down here, or you can use this. And you just slide that up just ever so slightly. And that's going to give the depth of 3D as if this is a little bit closer to the camera than our background and our shadow. So the shadow is directly on our background like it should. And our front layer here is directly above us. Okay, cool. Now that we have that done, the next thing we're going to do is make this look a little bit more 3D. Now, depending on what your logo look like, this will look quite a bit different uh, depending on how your logo looks okay so mine's very white so mine might not show up as good as somebody else's logo so what we're going to type in here in our effects and presets is going to be uh, cc light okay and that's going to bring up uh, in your generate tab cc light sweep and you'll bring that down and put that on top of your logo here okay now what that does is it just gives a slight looking intensity of light on the rim of your of your layer now if you see it also gives a slight rim light as well as a little bit of 3d depth as if this had a bevel so that's going to add to the effect that this is a 3d object okay so um, i'm just going to mess with the settings of this uh, i'm going to change maybe the sweep intensity up a little bit and since this is very light gray I'm not going to need to mess around with this uh, a little bit, but I know whenever I use this before, I would use it up a lot to give it that really shiny metallic uh, look. So I'm gonna keep it about right there. You can also change the edge intensity, which the edge intensity is going to go around your beveled opaque objects. So whether it is a mask or whether it is a PNG layer, it's going to find where there is no pixels or transparent pixels, it's gonna find those and bevel those based around where this sweep is. So that's pretty cool. And you can also change the edge thickness, but I'm gonna keep mine here since I, my uh, layer isn't very big and I don't want a whole lot of edge thickness on this, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the center of this. So I want this to sweep, okay? So I'm gonna change where my start point is, which is gonna be about right here. You can kind of move this slider, which you can see uh, there's a lot of different little things going on in this and you can see how it's moving around. So I'm going to start mine at about right here. Okay. And I'm going to hit that stopwatch at the very beginning of my composition. I'm going to move all the way to the end. We're basically going to animate every single thing uh, before we even start messing with the camera work. That way it's going to be way easier to do this. So the next thing we're going to do is move this uh, center position all the way to the other side. So that's going to look as if this light is sweeping across our composition. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit our drop down arrow and go to our effects and CC light sweep. And you see where it says center. We have two keyframes right here and right here. I'm going to hit F9. And that's going to make this to where it's more of a bezier. So it's going to have more of an organic looking sweep. Okay. So I want that to be very smooth. So that's what that's going to do. It's going to be just very smooth looking. Okay. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to do is 
uh, I'm going to add my overlay. Now this is gonna be probably the most dynamic thing that we're gonna to add to this scene. And it's actually not going to be a 3D object. So I have this Boca overlay, which you can download the free sample pack at Apple Productions 479 slash Light Artifacts. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff online as well that you can get, and uh, we will be introducing this huge 4K package uh, sometime soon in the next uh, month or so. I know it says May on the website. <laughs> we've got a little backed up, uh, but we've got a cool free sample package of 1080p effects. So you can just download those and drop them right into your compositions. So we'll just take this and we'll move this all the way on top. Now it's gonna be very, very black. So I see that this effect is only going onto about eight seconds of footage. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down just a bit. Okay, and I'm not, I'm not really gonna worry about that keyframe that I have there because it's still going to be moving and I'm not gonna have to worry about that. But you see what our overlay does is it gives this very organic look to our light sweep. So this is gonna make our footage look a lot more dynamic in the fact that this is now inside of a real scene, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this light overlay and we're gonna hit mode in our normal and you can change this to add. That's gonna be very, very hot uh, on your whites and brights. And it's gonna look very realistic. I like the way this look uh, or looks, uh, but you can also change it to uh, these color dodge effects. And I actually really like the way this color dodge effects with this uh, grunge. So I think I'm gonna keep it like that. It has this really grungy, saturated look as if uh, this is already in a post-produced uh, stock. So that looks pretty good. Uh, okay, so the next thing we're going to do, now that we have everything pretty much set and ready in our composition, I'm gonna go ahead and start animating this. So I want my camera to be all the way out and it's not all the way out. So I'm going to go ahead and click a keyframe on the very end of my composition here. So I'll go to the camera and I'm going to hit the drop down arrow and go to transform. And we're gonna change our point of interest, our position and orientation. These are the only three things that we're gonna change as we're not gonna change our X, Y or Z values. Okay, so this is where we're going to end, but I want it to be a little further out. So I'll go ahead and bring this just a bit more out because we have a lot of playroom with that texture that we have. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move this all the way up to the front and we're going to select these three keyframes again. So we'll make sure to hit our keyframes uh, assistant right here. We're going to zoom right back in and we're gonna zoom it in pretty close and we're gonna click our camera tool again and do orbit camera. And you can orbit it in any way you want but I want to orbit this in a fashion that it's just revealing part of the logo to uh, bring in a little bit more of that 3D. Now you can see, I mean, it's not perfect 3D, but it does give the depth of a 3D object. Uh, so now that we have that done, you can see that it moves out. And while it moves out, we have the dynamic camera there or the dynamic uh, light effect in there and it kind of zooms out and uh, it looks very, very good. Very, very, very good. Cool. So the next thing that you can do is you can colorize it. You can do whatever you want. And so we'll go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll just type in curves. Bring that down and just kind of uh, change it, make it look uh, however you want, you know, I mean, there's so many things that you can do um, with just a slight adjustment, you know. Just bring in a little bit more color, make it a little bit more grungy. It's looking pretty good. So we've got that and our effect is just about finished. Uh, the next thing that you can do, I'm going, I didn't do it in uh the uh, video that you just saw, but it is another way of bringing in just a little bit more depth. And that is by going and clicking the transform and going to camera options and go to depth of field and turn that on and bring your aperture all the way up to 100 pixels. And that's going to blur that out. And you can blur the settings quite a bit because I want a little bit of blur in there to make it look as if we've got like a 1.8 F uh, f-stop lens. I'm gonna change this to octagon just to give it a little bit more of that realistic depth there. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my focus distance. I'm just gonna make this 
to where the focal distance is very close to my camera because I want it to be as if the camera is moving or the depth of field is going to be moving with the logo. So I'll go ahead and hit uh, our keyframe assistant there and you can see that our depth is right here. So hit our keyframe assistant at the very beginning as I, I did not. <laughs> so I got the keyframe assistant right there and we'll move all the way down to the end here. And you'll just use that focus distance to push back into the background to where your logo is back in focus. Cool, and we'll just go ahead and play this back. All right, cool, now that we have this all rendered out, basically it just looks like this, has some slight depth of field, goes all the way through it and finishes off with uh, the end uh, animation here. So just by clicking on this depth of field, you are going to add to render time. So uh, if you're looking at really trying to finish this off as quickly as possible, uh, I would keep the depth of field unchecked if you don't have a decent computer that will be able to render this, this out very quickly. So just adding this adds on about two to five minutes of uh, render time. Uh, just because it's going to have to keep all of this information. Now, the last thing that you can do is go to layer, new, let's uh, go adjustment layer. And you want this to be all the way on top of this uh, and underneath your uh, overlay because we want to keep those overlays looking good. And I'm going to go to, uh, let's do exposure. A lot of people like using a black solid to make their vignettes. Me, I personally like to use the exposure because it brings a new element to the picture that this is actually exposed differently as if it was actually exposed <laughs> to uh, the actual footage uh, as if it was a exposed with the lens. So I like doing it this way just because it looks way more natural to me. Uh, so I'm also going to go to curves and you can probably do this with curves too. Uh, I just like doing it this way. I don't know why, I always have, and my mouse is messing up. So bring it down and create a little bit more of a dynamic level here. Cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to double click our ellipse tool, hit M instead of add, go to subtract, hit F, feather this out a bit. quite a bit more. And that is, that is that. We've got our logo looking good. Uh, we've got our vignette. We've got everything looking good. So that is it. That is our quick and simple tutorial. Um, everything's looking really good. Uh, so I'm going to end it off on here. So guys, make sure to check us out. Uh, all our other tutorials on YouTube. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, make sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash avidproductions479. Keep up with us on Twitter at twitter.com slash tutorial grid. And make sure to check us out uh, even more as we um, keep on doing this stuff. We also have a live stream on Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 11 p.m. Central. So make sure to check that out. So I will be signing off here. My name is